This video is supported by Orlando Informer. SeaWorld for beginners or first timers. Hey everybody, Rick and Nikki here at SeaWorld today to give you our top six must do rides. Today's video is going to exclude kids rides as we're gonna cover that topic in another video. So basically, the rides I'm going to show you today, you have to be over 54 inches tall to do them. Also, today's list will be in no particular order, though I think we'll save the water rides to last, and we will indicate which of these rides is our favorite. And the first roller coaster we come across today is Manta. 25 minute wait. I've got the GoPro on, but we do need to put the rest of the stuff in a locker. It's two dollars for two hours or you can rent for ten dollars and you can move your locker throughout the day Which is what we're going to do And here we go on to Manta Here we go with Manta. Yeah. Hopefully some cool like uh, POV shots with the GoPro. First things first, let's talk about the queue. Now I think as far as the roller coaster rides are concerned, that might be the best queue. Yeah, I would say so. Um, it's got, you're walking through the aquarium yeah. all the way through, so it's really pretty. Yeah, and get, nice and cool, too. lots of air conditioning. Yeah. <laughs> so you get to look at Manta and shark and other types of fish, so. Yeah. I think as far as the four roller coasters, that's got to be the best one. It gives you something interesting to look at. Right. Now, you're not going to think about what you're doing when you're in line. Right. Uh, <laughs> or what you're about to do anyway. Which is a unique roller coaster because we kind of fly around like looking down at the ground. Like Superman. Yeah, like yeah, like Superman. <laughs> but we're a Manta. Technically, technically we're a Manta, not a Superman. That's right. Uh, Super Manta. <laughs> so it's a unique feeling. Some of those loops when you're... You're riding a coaster that way, a very, very unique feeling. Right, you go from like a total change in gravity where yeah. you're leaning on your stomach to all of a sudden there's like heavy weight on your back and then a heavy weight on your stomach again. It's just, it is the weirdest Sorry, sensation. I, I wonder if I should give like a queasy factor. I know, because this one, you were green. He walked off the ride and I was like, you look kind of green, buddy. That was the reflection of the of the trees and the leaves. And all right. Although I was a little queasy. I was too, honestly. This one, like, if you're worried about, like, well, claustrophobia, let's just say. So the queue is kind of enclosed, mm -hmm. and then this ride, when it goes over your shoulders and you're leaning on your stomach and you have, like, nowhere to go, you're just, you're stuck in yeah. that seat. Because they have to put you in tight for this one. Yeah, you gotta be in tight, exactly. Um, so claustrophobia factor, you know, mm -hmm. is, is kind of big on this one, for me anyway. It is, but regardless, I would consider it a must do. Oh, for sure. And of course, after you exit Manta, 
a small little gift shop where you can purchase pictures on Ride Pictures or just some gifts like this Manta t-shirt. I think the next roller coaster we're going to do is going to be Mako just because we don't want the line to get too long. That is a very popular ride here and we kind of want to get the shortest wait time we can get without buying a quick queue. Well, isn't this convenient? The fastest roller coaster in Central Florida is only a five minute wait. But first, we need to put our stuff in a locker and we did get the movable locker, so should be pretty easy. And it was pretty easy. Don't worry about the hat and the glasses. They have bins right there by the roller coaster where I can store these until I'm done with the ride. Look on your screen for stats about Mako. Got off of Mako. I'm feeling pretty good. Are you? He was looking kind of green again. <laughs> I was. We'll get some food after this. Yeah, I think he just needs something in his tummy. But Mako, named after the ocean's fastest shark, mm -hmm. and like I said, it is the fastest roller coaster in Central Florida at 73 miles per hour. Yes, with a height of 200 feet. Mako is our favorite ride. I told you I would tell you our favorite ride, and it is Mako. It is. Lots of air time with those hills. I think it's like. I think nine airtime moments or nine airtime hills. Ah, oh, it's so much fun. I think well, so. Don't quote me on that. And it's super, super smooth too. I mean, that's my favorite part. It's just the smoothness. Plus, I like having just a lap restraint versus mm -hmm. over my shoulder. So another positive for that. Smooth like butter, as Nikki would say. I'll tell you one thing I do like about SeaWorld. All the foliage, all the trees, seems to have plenty of shade. You know, as far as the theme park goes, to have all the trees and stuff is really nice. I like it. So I thought we would take a snack break about halfway in the list, but we need to do it a little early. So Mama's Pretzel Kitchen, here we come. Look at this for $9.99. Cheesy pepperoni pretzel. Feeling better, babe? I'm feeling pretty good. Having one of my favorite snacks at Sea Road will do that for me. Now, we're not gonna go too in depth into the, uh, the treat we just had, the snack. Nope. Because maybe in the future, we'll do a Rick's top six treats and snacks at SeaWorld. Yep, so stay tuned for that. Yeah, click that subscribe button. You don't wanna miss it. Because I ain't saying nothing right now. <laughs> <laughs> we're close to the icebreaker, let's do this. Icebreaker, SeaWorld's newest roller coaster. Not only SeaWorld's newest coaster, it's the newest coaster in the area. It's got four launches, some forward, some backwards, and more airtime moments than even Mako. Have I enticed you enough to go on it, Nikki? Absolutely. I like this one. And just like all of the roller coasters here, a locker bank. Let's put our stuff in a locker. First, let me grab my GoPro. 
see what I mean about the roller coaster cues. Most of them pretty basic. Manta, like I said, probably the best. energy to get over That's it, pretty quick. The back row is very nice when it comes to that spike. Heck yeah. So if you want to enjoy the spike, do the back row versus the front row. <laughs> is it my imagination or you're getting taller? <laughs> I stepped up. You've been stepping up a couple times. I have, I cheat a little bit. You also stepped up and suggested the back row. Yeah, he fussed at me at first. He's like, no, I wanna be in the front row. And I'm like, no, you wanna be in the back row. And then finally I got him one over. Well, the only thing is with the uh, the GoPro on my chest, it's a better view from the front. It is, because it's a little bit lower. It sits lower. So yeah, and there's would, nothing blocking. Right, so you would see just a chair in front of you or a seat. So, if you're unhappy with the GoPro footage of that, thank Nikki. <laughs> it was a fun <laughs> ride though, so you just hushed. The back row is good for this because of that spike. It is, oh my gosh. Fantastic. It's a beyond vertical spike. Now the, the ride push down like the seating area, the restraint, mm -hmm. does slowly inch tighter as it goes through the ride. Force? Yes. <laughs> so my thighs were smushed on that one. But it's a fun family ride. It really is. You still have to be 54 inches to ride it though. Mm -hmm. At least 54 inches tall. Mm -hmm. uh, but another five minute wait today. It's a total walk on. It was amazing. Da -da 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 -da. I'm loving it. And now on to the fourth coaster of the day, Kraken. Not gonna lie, not gonna try to trick you. I'm gonna skip out on Kraken. Yeah, it's very similar to Dragon Challenge over at Universal Studios. Um, a lot of like of 360 Twists, turns and yeah, things like that. Corkscrews. Exactly, and that's just not your type of vibe for a roller coaster. Whenever you would go on Dragon Challenge, I would skip out, find a bench and eat popcorn. And there she goes. Have fun for me, honey. And I know what you guys are thinking, especially those who watch the live streams. Rick, don't lose the bag. There's Kraken. There's the bag. I won't forget it, I promise. While Nikki's on the coaster, I'll get some B-roll and tell you a little bit more about Kraken. I now quote directly from SeaWorld's website. Born from the tales that struck terror into sailors for centuries, SeaWorld Orlando's Mighty Kraken is a monster coaster like no other. Orlando's only floorless roller coaster is themed after a massive mythical underwater beast unleashed from the depths of the sea. Riders' feet dangle as they travel in open-sided seats, riding on a pedestal above the track at highway speeds to heights of more than 150 feet. That's what SeaWorld says about their own ride. My main takeaway, Orlando's only floorless roller coaster. Oh. Why do I just get nervous at this 
point. Oh my goodness. <laughs> wanted to do it I really did did you okay uh, did you have a good time um yeah a, a pretty decent ride I mean it's was smoother than I remember I think remember it okay. being I really like it it brings back like a lot of those you know dueling dragons dragon challenge you know memories it's really good and they offered for me to like ride it again because there was nobody in my line coming up so um, I didn't do it because I I knew you were waiting okay okay uh, Not because I wasn't feeling well. <laughs> so, so you weren't scared? No, I wasn't. Well, I'm always scared though. At the top, like just as you go up the incline, and then okay. yeah. So I, I'm always scared at that point. I didn't expect you to say that. What was the most scariest thing? Just the incline. You think the incline? The anticipation before you, you drop. Were you not more scared about me losing your bag? That's kind of funny because I was walking away. I'm like, I'm never going to see my yeah. bag again. As soon yeah. as I walked away, that's the first thing that went in my head. This would have been a lot funnier if you said you weren't afraid of anything. Oh. Ha. You messed it up. I messed it up. You shouldn't have fear. Well, we've completed four items on today's list. The next two items, the last two must do is going to be water attractions, water rides. That's got to be scary for you, Nick. A little bit. A little bit. First up, we have Journey to Atlantis. Most of this ride, Journey to Atlantis, I would say is a nice, relaxing boat ride with very beautiful and scenic views. However, all that comes to an abrupt end when you come to this water drop here. This attraction will get you a little wet, a little spritz. Your results may vary. You won't get soaked from head to toe though, right? Right. It just might mess up my hair. Now I do have a warning when it comes to this attraction and like young kids. Our oldest daughter, Caitlin, is kind of afraid of roller coasters to this day. And that stems from her experience as a young child on Journey to Atlantis. Apparently, when she came with some friends and relatives and cousins, she was not aware of the drop. So like I said, most of the rides, pretty relaxing, scenic views, until you get to the drop. She was not expecting the drop, and it scared the mess out of her. So much so, she has a hard time with roller coasters to this day. So just a friendly warning, make sure your child knows and is aware of that drop. As many of you know, Nikki requires 24 hours notice before getting on a water ride. She has had said notice. That's why it's a good thing I didn't lose that bag. What's in the bag, Nikki? Flip flops and a change of clothes. <laughs> yep, that's why you need 24 hours notice. So you can be prepared. No, it's because of my hair. <laughs> More than anything else, it's my hair. No. Nonetheless, you are prepared to get soaking wet. Yeah, they now, have. now you're gonna take off your sneakers. Yes, I, I wore my nice sneakers, so I brought flip flops. You wear your flip flops on the ride, on the ride. and then you're gonna change your hat too. Yes, I'm gonna change my hat. I don't wanna get this one wet. Now, the so. shirt you're wearing now, you're wearing that on the ride, or did you bring a ride shirt? Um, 
Does it matter? It doesn't really matter. I'll probably just end up changing into okay. the other shirt afterwards. So I'm just gonna walk around soaking wet. Ugh. Chafing. Mm -mm. Actually, for these water rides, the minimum height requirement is 42 inches. That's true for Infinity Falls. And then this is 1,520 feet of track with 14 rafts and a 40 foot drop. And of course, many, many rapids. And this appears to be the most popular ride in the park because wait time, 70 minutes. Regardless, we've gotta go find a locker. And we have made it to the end of the line. Let's get ready to get a little wet. Forget the rafts, I'll take the kayak and Nikki will take the stand up paddle board. Wait a second, this is a water ride? Uh oh. What did you tell me? your first fall down Infinity Falls. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. It was I mean, a good time. I didn't get so badly wet like all over. Like if you see my front, so I'm not that bad, but it's it's really it's the back. The back the and your and your left side because you were sitting in the seat that had the step through. Oh, uh, I didn't even realize. So that's why you were so gleefully I'm like, Take that seat, happy Nikki. when I yeah. sat there. Yeah, there's a, more opportunity for water to come through that opening. Yeah. So, yeah, that's my water side too. I got pretty, I, I mean, I'm not, I'm medium soaked. I'm not completely drenched, You're medium right. soaked. It's just my shoes. Yeah. My, my shoes are soaked. Yeah, I, I took, I brought flip flops. I was smart. You I took smart. mine off. You were smart. Although I will admit, there was a lot of people taking their shoes off like right before they got on the ride. Yeah. So. I thought the raft itself was kind of a tight fit. It was it for it you? It felt tight to me. It was snug. Yeah. I was definitely snugly tucked in there. And you didn't know about that lift, did you? No. But 
the big phone. Yeah, I had no idea about the lift. Oh my gosh, it was so fun. It really was a lot of fun. It was a now really... Now that I'm not like, <laughs> you know, now that I'm not like soaked and... Afraid. And, and I'm off of it now. Soaked and afraid. Coming, a new TV series coming soon. <laughs> not to be confused with the other thing. Oh, no, let's not confuse that. No. Uh, but a big splash at the end. Yeah, for sure. That's, I mean, and some little ones with, oh, the moguls. The moguls is what I wanted to bring oh, up. Oh, yeah. It was like, boop, boop, yeah. boop. <laughs> that was an intense section. It was. It was great. It was fun. Uh, yeah, totally a total must do when you're at SeaWorld Orlando. Now, while we are quite wet, pretty wet, not as wet as we were when we visited SeaWorld's Discovery Cove, when we went swimming with the dolphins and went snorkeling, if you want to see that video to see what it's like to go to SeaWorld's Discovery Cove, check the description box. I will leave a link and an info card popping up on the screen right now. So there you go, you sea roll newbies and first timers. Sea roll for beginners. <laughs> if you're here, you want to enjoy sea roll. Those are six things, six rides, I should say, you must do. Definitely must do. Now the other thing is, helicopter. They fly tours over sea roll. Yeah, they do. I didn't want to talk about that though, but I had to because it flew overhead. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, if you need tickets to sea world. I'll tell you where to get them from, orlandoinformer.com. They sell day tickets to SeaWorld. Go get yourself some and do these six rides. <laughs> now, if you're interested in some things to eat and some other things to do, well, I haven't made those videos yet. So click that subscribe button and the bell notification button so you'll know when those videos are ready. And as always, don't miss the magic, don't miss the fun. Thanks for watching Rick's Flicks. And now it is time to relax.